Hello and welcome to this video. So now we have our Excel sheet, I'd like to go a bit further and add a line chart onto the Excel sheet. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the cumulative gains over time for the test period for the best cross for each of the pairs. So in this one here you'll see hopefully a chart here showing the cumulative gains over time for the 816 cross. This one here you'll see it for the 48 cross and 416 and so on. Now this isn't necessarily the best way to analyze the data, but it is a good way to show you how to get the chart onto Excel because there are a couple of things we're going to need to do inside the code to get there. So I've made a couple of changes to ma underscore excel.py. They're very small, but just down the bottom, I'm loading in all trades because we're going to need to do that. And of course, once we've got the chart, we'll update masim.py. The create Excel function then takes in all trades. I think I've changed the name of this it's from df to ma test results. And then we need the all trades in here as an argument as well. Before continuing, I'm just going to comment out the writer here and comment out the writer.save and also comment out the add pair sheets because when we run this script, I don't want to rewrite the Excel sheet until towards the end. So we have our all trades and you remember that inside MASIM Explore, we had this line, which I'm going to copy here just to create the cross. So we can use the cross later on. And now we're faced with a slightly tricky problem. If I look at the data we had in the exploration, you remember we have the time columns for the time of each trade. This time here is what's known as time zone aware. It has a time zone on it. This plus and then the number here tells you the time zone. When we save data down into Excel, it won't accept time zone aware date times. So we need to strip the time zone from the date time. It's nothing actually we haven't seen before. We've got the time column and then we're doing list comprehension, looping through all of the times in our time column. And for each value in the column, we're saying, please replace the time zone info with none. So in other words, remove the time zone. And that's all we need to do to get rid of the time zone. But it's something that when you first start trying to write Excel sheets and you get these strange errors, this is the reason and this is how to get rid of the time zone. One of the ways anyway, there are others. So the next step is to start thinking about how we're going to add our charts. Now we want a line of the cumulative data for the best cross for a given pair. So we're obviously going to need to calculate this data. So to do that, we're going to add a new function. I'm going to call it add pair charts. It's going to take in our MA test results, our all trays, and also our Excel writer, because we're going to be writing the data. For now, I'm just going to set this equal to none, which means it has a default argument. We've got some columns here, which we use later just to make a subset of our data. And for now, I just want to call this function down inside here and say MA test results, all trades. And we don't need anything for the writer yet because that's defaulting to none. So the first thing we need to do is work out how to get the best cross for each of the pairs. So if I just print the first 10 rows of MA test res, you should now be familiar with this data frame. We need to find a way for each of the pairs getting which was the best gain and which is the best cross. Now the table inside the code was sorted in order of pair and then total gain. So the table is already in order of best to worst cross. So we need to find a way of extracting basically the first row of each occurrence of each unique pair inside the table. Now there are a number of ways of doing this, but one quite good way and that's why I wanted to show it you is using something called drop duplicates, which is a really, really handy function inside pandas. What drop duplicates does is it removes any rows that have duplicate entries. Now, if you don't put the subset parameter in there, it'll try and identify duplicate entries for every column inside the data frame. However, if you put a subset, it'll look for duplicates just based on the columns that you put in the subset list. So here we're telling it, please identify duplicates, but only based on the pair. And what it returns is a new data frame. And in this case, it will have kept for each duplicate just the first row of that particular occurrence. Now you can change this with other arguments, but we need just the first one. In other words, what it should do is for each new pair, just keep the first row, which for us is the best row. That will be the row with the best cross. So if I print dftemp.head, we can have a look what comes out in the result. You can see that now we've got two data frames. Now, obviously we've got lots of just, now obviously we've just got Canadian Swiss franc in the first 10 here, because there are more than 10 results for that one. But you can see in the data frame below now, we've kept the first row, the best row of that one. And we can assume that we've kept the best row and the best cross for all of the following pairs as well. So that's the first step done. The next step we need to do is a bit more involved. We need to iterate through all of the rows inside our temp here, which are our best results. I'll just delete this one here. And for each of those rows, we then need to calculate the cumulative gain. Now, going back into Sim Explore, you remember that we, for the Canadian dollar Japanese yen, had this line here. We took all trades and then selected for the pair and for the particular cross we we're interested in. And we're going to use almost identically this line here. 
but we need to iterate through every row in the data frame and extract from that row in the data frame the particular pair and the particular cross that we have. So to do that, we're going to use something called iter rows. Now there are lots of ways of doing this iteration through data frames and iter rows is a very handy one and powerful one, but it's also slow. So when you come to using huge data sets, you need to do some other things to improve the performance. And often that involves making lists of the information that you need and iterating through the lists. But for our use, it's more than enough just to use the index and the row. Now to give you an idea of what this is doing, we're going to do one loop where we'll print the index and we'll print the row and then we'll stop. And I'll also change this head to head five so we don't have so much uh, space on the console. So if I just run this, we get the first five rows and this is the first row. And you'll see that we print index 452, which is the index of the row. And then we're printing the row. And the row is a set of indexes and values. So we have index pair, num trades, total gain, MA short, MA long, and then we have the particular values as well. And what's handy about this is it's easy to get those values. So if I type row.cross and row.pair like so, and rerun, you can see now that we get row and then MA16 and CAD CHF. So we can use this information on each row to select the data that we need. So to do that then, using exactly the same code as we've seen inside the Sim Explorer before, we're going to make a temporary all trades data frame where we select with the cross based on the current rows cross and the pair based on the current rows pair. And what we can do is we can print the first five rows of that just to have a look as well. So the first row is the Canadian dollar Swiss franc with the MA816 and you can see that our temporary data frame here is all MA816 and then has the trades one by one through that data frame. So the last thing to do now, and again, it's exactly the same as it was from the notebook. We're going to calculate the cumulative gain on the data frame. And now what we'll do is we'll cut this line out here, put it below here and do tail. So we'll have a look at the last five values on the data frame. So you can see we've arrived at our cumulative gain of 247.2, which is the same as it is inside the data frame at the top here. So that's good to know that the numbers cross reference correctly and it's all for the correct cross. And it's this cumulative gain data that we want to plot in our line chart along with the time. And you'll notice that the time, by the way, no longer has the time zone attached to it. So it's time zone free. So I'm going to just comment these lines out just in case you want them later and comment this one out as well because we don't really need it and we can comment this one out. We have our information to actually write the data into Excel because we need this information to then make the chart. So the final thing to do then to get that data in is to type temp all trades and then a subset is col, so that means just take the time and the cumulative gain to Excel, use our writer, which I'm now going to take the none out at the top and then we'll pass it in below. The sheet name is the name of the row pair. The start row is zero, so that's the first row, and the start col is seven, so that'll be the eighth column. I can also remove this break. So to set this up running then, we can go back down into Create Excel. We can activate our writer. We can activate the add pair sheets. Here with the add pair charts, we now need to pass in the writer, and then writer.save should be all we need to do to save the file. Now, of course, you need to make sure, and you've probably experienced this already, that the Excel file is closed. So I'm going to hold my breath and run this in the console. Okay, and then let's have a look what's come out. Okay, so we can see Canadian dollar Swiss franc then, and we've got some data in here, which is our time and our cumulative gain. And then we're going to use this then to plot the chart. Let's just check the others. And we have these as well. Visually, it's probably not the best thing ever to have these tables here, but for convenience and speed of the course, it's okay. In the next video, we're in the position to convert this data into some kind of line chart on the right-hand side here. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, comments, questions, welcome as always on YouTube.